it's almost like it's, there's this push to criminalize being homeless. Now you don't lose your constitutional rights just because you you lose your home. This is this makes no sense. And to for government to try and uh, make it seem that well, it's illegal to help people. I was stunned that in some areas it was banned feeding people in public. Like how crazy is that? You can't and and. To, to stop us from helping each other is, is just fundamentally wrong. So I just don't know where we're going with it. Like, I don't understand. There's no logic to destroying the, the tiny home mu movement. Economically, there's no logic. Health-wise, public health-wise, and all the rest. So right. no, I, I'm trying to understand, what's this Agenda 2030? Like, I'm asking you because I'm sure you know so much more about it than me. I come from a background of health care and just ethics, not from religion or or from, um, I'm not, I don't know politics in the U.S., you know, I'm just a Canadian, but <laughs> I just, I don't understand, it, just from a human level, whether you live in Australia or in L.A., we all need to sleep like six to eight hours within a 24 span of time. We all need shelter. You cannot become independent. It's just down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, you can, you have to feel safe and have shelter, food, and all the rest before you can move on to independence. And that would mean holding a job and your money. And there's this move to, like, let's keep their money if they don't become sober and keep them on farms and get them to work. There's this dehumanizing that really irritates me that... Um, I see that they're trying to make the homeless look like it's all their fault. Meanwhile, minimum wage should be triple what it is. It should be about $18 an hour in the U.S. And, and seriously, rents have doubled. And then I find out, like in the last year, I find out the homeless situation has gone up 12% since Garcetti's been in office. And uh, there was one more thing. Oh, yeah, somebody told me about this Airbnb service uh, or there's these where... Out of five properties to set aside for low-income rentals are being rented out to vacationers. Now, the thing about the VA, which disgusted me, is this land has been deeded, and the stadium, somebody signed, the chancellor, or I, I don't have the guy's name off the top of my head, but I put him on my petition, is that they're keeping the stadium for 10 years. Granted, they're paying for a lot of services for veterans. Problem is... Um, you know what? That was illegally built on land deeded for homeless vets, and they're calling it a reuse uh, lease. They're giving it fancy titles, right, to say this is, you know, we've got to do this. It doesn't matter. It's You're taking land that was meant for others. Here we have homeless veterans sleeping on the street outside the fence there, and there's like 11,000 of them, more than... Like, I'm just astounded at the numbers. I can't believe the Canadian Red Cross hasn't responded. So... Here's the thing, right? right? My last petition update is like, look, in the very least, share the stadium grounds with the homeless veterans. When I found out Elvis said on, on his interview with Brian Engelman that there's enough land there to put every homeless veteran in there. And they've got all the facilities and washrooms and so on. It's just as simple as basic human rights, my God. It's just that simple. It doesn't have to be difficult. And then I find, a, a, you know, five years ago there was a lawsuit in order uh, litigation, um, Valentino versus something or other, I can't remember, Shinesky, Shemet, in 2011. So you guys aren't exaggerating when you're saying they're not doing anything. Like, it's been five years, two and a half years, nothing, and things are getting worse. 12% rise in, in homelessness. So... Uh, I'm just trying, I started with just Curran Price to petition him three weeks ago, and incrementally I've just been adding people as I go, and I'm up to, I think, 17 people, and including some Canadians, and, just, and Justin Trudeau, and the Canadian branch of the Red Cross, and also our Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Stephen Dion. And, you know, nobody's gotten back to me. I think what's, what's troubling me is it's that whole saying of... Um, hearing what's not being said. It's the fact that, you know, the United Nations Human Rights, I tagged them on Google+, Plus. my emails don't go through. I'm having, it's, it's, it's what they're not saying, they're not acting. 
And omission to act is, is just as bad. And when they are acting, it looks very criminal to me. I'm hearing about they're take, seizing property, they're destroying citizen investment, they're taking belongings. Uh, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on, but it's not, it makes no sense from an economic standpoint or a public health standpoint. And uh, yeah, right. so I don't understand this. Is it all money? Is it just greed? I guess it is. I guess it all comes down to greed. Because there's no excuse. I can't see an excuse why we can't put the tiny homes on the uh, veteran affairs, uh, the land there that's designated where that baseball stadium is. I don't understand that. Right. So what, is, well, what do you think is going on? Are, like, are they trying to drive homeless people out of the city? Do you think it's more sinister than that? I don't know. It just makes no sense to me. Right. Well, you know, it, it's there's a lot there's a lot at play. Um, you know, from a global perspective, the the agenda is a depopulation agenda or population yeah, control. This is what is uh, irritating me because I don't understand yeah. this. That's why they they want the the government health care um, because they can control it you know and um, for example in the the Obamacare bill I believe it was page 1101 don't quote me on that uh, it's the introduction of the RFID chip which they're going to use under the the, the guise of um, of helping uh, senior citizens with uh, Alzheimer's they'll, they'll put the chip in the senior citizen it'll help them Remember to take their medication and where and where they're from. Uh, so the, it, it's control on a global agenda on a local level. You know we're we're dealing with um, we're dealing with politicians that some of them are very compromised in many different ways or making backdoor deals to keep uh, the homeless uh, well homeless uh, because it, it will justify the need for more. Uh, money for the social programs, mm -hmm. the need for more money for their salaries, and all these other uh, departments of this and departments of that. It keeps the the government racket uh, continuing. And when the the power of an individual with common sense, like Elvis Summers or, mm -hmm. or anybody that that tries to fix a problem that is simple as night, comes along, and we're we're pointing out that the emperor has no clothes. Right, and they can't handle that, so they're going to do intimidation. Well, first they ignore you, but when you make a big noise, then they attack you. Yeah, and that's what's kind of going on. Um, you know, I, uh, you may have seen that on on, on the social media of, of some uh, flagrant attacks from quote other council members, which you know we should just ignore. We have to understand that there are people that are paid to be agitators. Uh, they're paid by whomever, it could be government or uh, opposition groups, to um, to buffoon a movement like the tiny house movement. Oh, I, I so expose them because I've been through the right. voting thing many times and now I, if, if somebody says or does things, I document it. I've never called any of those people a name, but on the tiny houses, you know, I, I expose them. I challenge them. They've, they've challenged, you know, some of them sent me personal messages to challenge me and start a media war with me, which I'm probably the wrong person to do that with. You know, some little tiny council member has no, doesn't doesn't have a leg getting a media war with me, if you know my background. And we don't need to get in <laughs> that here. So, um, it's just a waste of time, and I don't need to waste time on little peons from little tiny council whatever. You know, it's like fighting a, a high school child with no limbs there's no point so uh what we're doing in, in the tiny house movement overall is we're celebrating life and we're showing just how easy it can be to uh help the less fortunate yeah. it's as easy as as making yourself a meal every day because there, there's opportunity to are you still there dean to find someone else a meal in our own. Americans, and I would say Canadians too. Hello? Are you still there? Hello? I, yeah, I am. It's really windy where I am. We're, oh, we're okay. experiencing a lot of weather problems. Oh, okay. My Anyways. Problem. Stop for a sec. Just, just to finish my thought. Yeah. Um, 
it, it is really the, the, the act of charity is, is alive and well in America, and I, and I think so in Canada as well. Uh, Americans are very giving people. And I know the federal government in America likes to call it foreign aid, like they'll give foreign aid to Israel. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not really myself, my neighbor, or, or my, you know, people across state lines are giving foreign aid. It's really our tax money being used as foreign aid. Right. The real aid is coming from law-abiding, uh, goodwill uh, citizens that want to help, whether it's monetary or, or, or donating clothing, or in this case, uh, donating a tiny house. That's real charity uh, on behalf of the individual, which is the, which is the the uh, is going to be a domino effect, we believe across the uh, across the country. Oh, I think so. This this has got to be a global, uh, become a global thing, because uh, uh, you know being self-sustaining and uh, using less energy, I'm all for that. I, I just uh, you know. We can't leave people behind. We can't segregate, and and it just seems like, well, why are, uh, why is there this push to segregate people into the who has? Well, the, the segregation is is the old, 20th century mindset of divide and conquer. If we can keep the populace separated, with uh, the gays fighting the straights, the blacks fighting the whites, the the have nots and the the haves fighting each other. Uh, then, then the the um, the power structure can do full domination over uh, free people, and that that's exactly what we're seeing uh, with, especially with this President Obama, who's been uh, a very divide and conquer, uh, race baiting president uh, that, that I that I in my lifetime, um, who, who's really used the old tactics of of the 20th century, but has been doing it under the disguise of the left because he's a Democrat and the disguise of the fact that he's uh, that he's black so he can get away with it. You know, you can't criticize him. And, and I suspect that the same thing will happen if and when uh, Hillary Clinton gets in office. We'll see more of the same, you know. And um, But really, the, these problems we see in our cities, federal level, or one president can't really change it. One person can, and that's the most beautiful thing about this whole thing, is one person did make a change, which has been a domino effect. And then, you know, bringing people like me on board and, and others, uh, um, you know, it affects the hearts and minds of, of many people around the country and, and around the world, too. We've gotten a lot of support uh, for many people, uh, all, just about all over the place, from Australia to Europe to Canada, you name it. So it's it's a real exciting thing to, uh, to not only see but to be a part of. So what do you what do you think is the next step here? If they're are, they're still ignoring Elvis, they're not the city of L.A. is not coming to the table in any way to give him land or, or like where where do things stand with what well, he's the, doing? The next the next step would to be make to uh, it's to make uh, louder noise, have more of a media presence. You know, um, to make more, to get really more involved in the interview circuit mm -hmm. and really use the power of media that has been put on the people from the, the, the propaganda standpoint of, of the, the uh, social engineers. To take that same kind of formula and place it back on them and show, um, to really show a mass amount of people that this is what we're doing. We're going to use the, the, multimedia social media platform to show you how it's done mm -hmm. and to to uh, to join us rather than to uh, uh, ignore or not even know about us that's the next step it's to um, to up the ante yeah exactly uh, well you know I'm, I'm hoping this change.org petition I started three and a half weeks ago um, you know most of them take six to eight months to take off is what the change.org people tell me so that's a good thing that you've done I, I really uh, it's, it's very inspiring well it's just based on just a background of like health and ethics it's not political or religious yeah it's common sense isn't it it's just yeah so, exactly it's just common sense that's so ho sorry? hopefully hopefully uh, uh, what I'm saying helps you I don't I'm not sure what kind of story you wanted to write on me or 
hopefully this helps um, the piece that you're doing. And I mean, I can give you some quotes or whatever else you may need. But um, overall, you know. Yeah, I want to know what your plans are, and and uh, just I wanted to really know what happened at the rally because, as I say, my feed was cut off. I didn't catch the the press conference. Um, and I just wanted to know if anybody was willing to address, you know, what Elvis Summers has been doing. I mean, he's been he's been following it by the books and asking for help all along, and uh, it looks right. like they're just ignoring him, and they still are. Is that is that right. where we, we're at right now? And there's some detractors, but is where, where we're at right now, we have to make more noise. Sure. Yeah. Well, there, like I said, there's going to be more of a media presence in the future. I know the, the, there's going to be a, a charity fashion show coming up um, okay. that we're, we're still working on, uh, as well as uh, another, um, we're going to do another rally that's probably going to be uh, twice the size of this one. And uh, LA Times said there were 75 people, but they were there for like five minutes. There were people coming into that rally for, for like two hours. There was well over 100. Oh, yeah. Um, they do a quick head count and whatever, and you know, they're, they're, I don't know what they're, they're just a bunch of cynical people sometimes. So there's well over a hundred, and, and you gotta you gotta take into account that it was midday on a Friday mm -hmm. in downtown LA, and the parking is incredibly uh, challenging. Oh yeah. And people hate going to downtown LA. Anyone that lives in LA, nobody really goes to downtown LA because a the homeless problem, two the parking. It's like fifteen twenty dollars to park. Yeah. Three, there's a there's a it's a police state. Police are at every corner, every nook and cranny, because it's the head of the LAPD. It's just a pain in uh, a pain in the uh, pain in the neck. So for us to have over a hundred people That's and have the mainstream uh, media kind of ignore us because of the press conference that was uh, placed right before us to offset us. Uh, that doesn't mean we didn't have mainstream. We had a few mainstream media, but of what we could have had, there was a wet blanket put on us by the LA City Council. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was pretty well. I predicted we were only going to have 50. For so for us to have well over 100, um, I thought it was, it was very, very successful. And oh, yeah. you know the detractors, who cares about them? They're like I can count them on one hand compared yeah. to the support we have. You know they we don't need. To, to change detractors' mind, they need us. We don't need them. So I don't I don't even pay any attention to it. And um, that's just that's where we are. And it's not the end. It's just the beginning. And I'm really excited for the future. And I think the the glimmer of hope and a lot of the less fortunate's eyes, the ones that I saw that day, mm -hmm. are are looking forward. And instead of looking behind them all the time. They're looking for it. They're not looking in the rearview mirror, and that's it's a beautiful thing to see, to, to awaken the mind and the possibilities of, of real change and not fake propaganda change by the State Department. Right. Well, well, so, well said. Well, it's, it's happening. It's not going to happen. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to research more about you. Are you going to email me, send me something? I don't know. Uh, you want me to send you uh, my resume or? or well, um, let's see. I could. I started. Just tell me what you want me to know because I, you know, this is so impromptu. I didn't really prepare anything, and I ranted because I'm just so. No, that's fine. I, I started my media career at. Um, well, I was a journalist major in college, and I stopped for a while, and um, I just didn't. You know, was that I? I, I covered the anti-Iraq war rallies years ago and then um, years later I got asked to be a reporter and segment producer for Infowars.com uh, for Alex Jones and then I switched over I was there for about a year and then I became a segment producer for Coast to Coast AM and after that I freelanced and worked for places like um, naturalnews.com um, and, and other places and you know, I've done radio for a number of years off and on, and uh, I'm a filmmaker. I'm, I'm shooting two movies right now. Uh, one is on psychedelic drugs, and the other one is uh, I'm working with Sean Stone on the quintessential 9-11 movie. Wow. Uh, I'm with Sean Stone, Ed Asner, uh, Jim Mars, 
some really good people, and Dylan Avery, Richard Grove, to name a few. Um, so I got some <clears throat> got some really good things going for me. Um, also, I think I'm going to be in a romantic comedy later in the year, but I can't confirm that. <laughs> That's great. Wow, you sound yeah. busy. You sound really busy. Yeah, yeah so, you know, I, I'm not really into the acting thing, but if it's for the right project, I can certainly, you know, I can certainly perform with the best of them. Wow. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed. I, uh, I feel very lucky to have sort of interviewed you over Skype. Hopefully you don't mind if I upload parts of this. No, please do. Uh, no, thank you for it. No, it's cool. What you know, it's all about for the. We we all we're all here for the common cause, and we all kind of know the common enemy. So I uh, I appreciate you, and thank you for calling me on Skype. And um, I look forward to uh, the future and in really uh, in making real change and and continuing to uh, unlock minds about the uh, reality. Of, of things. Yeah, well, we have to look out for each other. That's what I think. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's what it's all about, you know. So, thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. And oh. uh, Same here, kind man. We'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Take care. I will. And All right. Thanks.